chaos, time pressure, uncovered topics and probably clueless faces. All that is what you do not want to see at the end of a virtual meeting. And here are seven tips how to avoid these pitfalls and hold the most effective virtual meetings that you've ever seen. Hi, my name is Leia and I'm an industry and management consultant having worked as a project manager for several years. I've probably held hundreds or thousands of virtual meetings by now and want to share seven proven tips to hold them in the most effective manner to avoid losing time, missing out on topics and opening up more questions than were actually solved. Even though I very much believe in tip number six and seven that I will share later, Let's start with the most basic one, namely the correct tech setup. As you might know from first-hand experience, tech can be quite tricky, especially since most of us are used to a certain virtual communication software tool, which makes it hard or even frustrating using a new and unknown one. Not only since sometimes there are problems logging in or accessing certain websites or links, from company computers, but also since there's just really user-unfriendly tools out there. And let me know in the comments which you think are the most unuser-friendly ones. So in order to hold effective virtual team meetings, make sure that everyone can and knows how to access and properly use these chosen virtual meeting software. This can be done, for example, by sending out um, access links in advance or providing short how-to guides that help external participants to download or log into the chosen software. Tip number two, know the tools that are available in your virtual meeting software and know how to use them. Before holding the meeting, think about the topic, the team or the audience and the goals you want to achieve. And then think about specific tools that you might think are helpful, such as virtual whiteboards, a poll, using the chat or other sharing and collaboration functionalities. Almost all virtual meeting softwares have a chat and a sharing functionality. However, not all of them have a built-in whiteboard or poll functionality. Therefore, if you would like to use any of these fancier functionalities, make sure to choose the suitable communication software that has these tools built in and familiarize yourself with them. Otherwise, if you want to stick to your default communication software and still want to use, for example, a virtual whiteboard, Think about alternatives or workarounds, such as just using a blank PowerPoint page for sketches during the meeting. In order to make each and every virtual team meeting as efficient and effective as possible, make sure to set a very few specific goals. So setting one to two or three key objectives usually works quite well, even for shorter meetings. Once these three key objectives are set and communicated at the very beginning, Everyone in the meeting knows the target towards the team is working on during the meeting. And in addition to setting these objectives at the very beginning of the meeting, you can also share them in advance such that meeting participants can prepare themselves respectively. And within the meeting, make sure to always link the discussion back to these key objectives such that time is not wasted by discussing anything but the core topics of interest. Tip number four to have more effective virtual meetings is to set some ground rules. Ideally, these ground rules should not be set before each and every meeting because they are just common sense and common decency. For example, you should know that you should let everyone speak out or that you should dedicate your full attention to a presented topic without multitasking. Sometimes, and especially in virtual meetings, politeness and decency is overlooked just because it's so easy to hide behind a camera or a microphone. And if that's the case, Feel free to either state some common ground rules at the very beginning of the meeting or remind people during the meeting, for example, to turn on their cameras or mute their microphones if not speaking, to not interrupt others or to stop constantly being on the mobile phone in parallel. But what do you think? Are people behaving more rude in virtual meetings than in face-to-face -face meetings? Let me also know in the comments down below. Next, and just before we come to the two major tips in my opinion, you should think about the most effective meeting design. And by meeting design, I mean the structure as well as the methods used within your virtual meeting. Based on the objectives of your meeting, 
You should think about the general structure and segments of the meeting and plan it respectively. Well, there are probably hundreds or thousands of ways to structure a meeting, but there's no right or wrong. It may be the case that you want to start with the problem statement first and then let everyone provide their input and point of view before collectively formulating a solution. Or you might want to start with a recap of a prior meeting that might take some time, but provides new meeting participants with the required background for further discussion. Discussions. Alternatively, after stating the goals of the meeting, you might want to start right away with the discussion instead of allowing for time-consuming individual presentations. So you can see there's a variety of different approaches to structure a meeting. In practice, you should always keep the available meeting time in mind and structure your meeting and prepare a respective agenda that fits your purpose and most likely provides the best outcome for your meeting and your goals. Now, having prepared all of these individual pieces, such as the chosen software, the tools you want to use, having set the ground rules and the objectives and prepared the agenda, it's time to put the puzzle together. So finish your preparation and share the necessary insights and information with the meeting participants. If you want an effective virtual meeting, Make sure everyone knows what's required to be effective and efficient. Things you might want to share before a meeting could be an agenda, pre-read documents, files for review, or the goals of the meeting. However, sometimes it might not make sense to share information in advance, but rather talk through them directly in the meeting. And this might be the case, for example, if the information is very complex or controversial and might not be understood by everyone without the voiceover. Finally, tip number seven, and in my opinion, the most crucial ones to hold effective virtual team meetings, namely participant engagement. I mean, what is a meeting if only one person speaks and entertains the others? Well, it's a talk or a monologue, but nothing else. So to get a common understanding and achieve your goals, you should ensure that everyone in the meeting is acknowledged. So make sure everyone knows each other and the value one is bringing to the table. It might even be worth accounting for some small talk at the beginning of the meeting and spend enough time for introductions. Thereby, people just have time to familiarize themselves and provide some personal and professional background that can break the ice and reduce potential doubts towards the others. And remember, sometimes a good mood and atmosphere is half the job. But don't forget to ensure that only relevant people are in the meeting such that everyone makes a contribution and is adding value to achieve your goals. Or the other way around, do not invite people that would not help advancing the topic or solution. If you also want to become better in achieving your personal and professional goals, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more practical career and real life advice. Thanks for watching and see you next time.